So we would um, like to invite the first speakers up to stage. So Secretary, Senator, and Assembly Member, um, all up to stage, and then we will go ahead and begin. Welcome. Excited to have everyone here. Uh, my name is Trey Bradley, and I am the Deputy Director for Sustainable Freight and Supply Chain at the California Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, or GOBIZ as we call it. I want to first thank all the ports, the legislature, and federal partners, and all those across the supply chain who emphasize and understand the importance of data and its vital role in our goods movement and supply chain ecosystem. And thank you to all those who are tuning in via the live stream on the GoBiz YouTube channel. Thank you to all the speakers here today who are here to talk primarily about three things, the importance of our ports and supply chain ecosystem in California to our state and national economies, California's leadership in data and innovation, and the opportunity to, use, to, to develop and use data systems and our ports to accelerate and foster integration and interoperability within our supply chain. This is all given one-time funding provided by last year's budget to support and fund data systems at California's five containerized ports. As you listen and interact today, we encourage you to think about the potential of data for making a more efficient and resilient supply chain in California. With that, I want to invite first up to welcome us here in Sacramento. We have the Secretary for the California State Transportation Agency, Tokes Omashakan. Uh, good job. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and welcome to those of you who may have traveled up from your ports from different parts of the state. Welcome to welcome to Sacramento. Uh, I'm excited to uh, be a part of this particular uh, partnership agreement and signing with the state. Uh, it seems like over the last uh, several months and weeks, that we are going through a period uh, of what I would call uh, a period of uh, excitement and extreme enthusiasm for ports. Uh, it's never, ever been like this to my recollection. And I think a lot of us in the room know it's because of uh, the period that we came out of right before. Uh, I want to start off by giving a lot of kudos and a lot of credit, first of all, to uh, Governor Gavin Newsom uh, for his leadership. Uh, in making to a day like today um, happen uh, because through his leadership, he saw the crisis that was happening. I think what most people know that uh, the, the, the saying that, you know, when California sneezes, the rest of the country catches a cold. Uh, when the ports here got backlogged, um, the rest of the country, the rest of the world was definitely feeling the pinch. And he, he has stepped up and made quite a bit of uh, policy adjustments and investments to to uh, get to focus on ports and to get us in a better place. And he's done that through his team. And part of uh, his team, obviously, is is trailing in his leadership and focus on ports. But my counterpart on many fronts as well, as uh, many of you know, uh, is Dee Dee Myers, Director Dee Dee Myers and uh, her leadership and her work. Um, the fact that uh, the focus on ports from the state is not just happening at the transportation agency. It's happening um, at, at GoBiz. They recognize uh, Trillin and his boss. Uh, they recognize how important ports are to the economy of the state and this country and the world. And so uh, many kudos to uh, Director uh, D.D. Myers as well. Uh, to the elected officials in the room, uh, I get a chance to to rub shoulders with uh, Assembly Member uh, Mike Gibson uh, and Senator Bradford uh, very often. I feel very fortunate to know these two gentlemen. Uh, thank you for all the work that you do uh, with these ports, especially the, uh, the the ports in the areas that you you represent. And to the ports uh, that, that are in, in the room, uh, I see a couple of our CEOs uh, actually sitting sitting up front here. Thanks for, thanks for taking the time and for all the work that you're doing to make sure our ports are strong and uh, not only strong from an economic standpoint and efficiency standpoint, but the things that the state really cares about that I'm going to mention um, uh, that I'm going to mention in a minute and to the board, the commission, your staff as well. Uh, thank you. And Kappa leadership is, is in the room as well. So thank you uh, very much. So as far as today goes, this, uh, the ceremony that we're having historically uh, there's been a lack of available a shipping data that has resulted in system inefficiencies. 
some of this data contains the location of cargo on its journey through the supply chain, which as many of us know in the room is critically important. Uh, key operators of our transportation network need to receive this information early enough to make important decisions. Now with improved data visibility and interoperability, transportation providers can better understand where cargo is in the supply chain and better plan for more efficient cargo movement at and near ports of Wainimi, uh, ports of Long Beach, uh, ports of Los Angeles, uh, port of Oakland, so Oakland in the room, uh, yes, uh, and the port of San Diego. This can result in huge benefits for our supply chain and transportation system, increased reliability, resilience, and decreased emissions uh, and congestion. These gains align perfectly with our core four priorities that guide all of our work at CalSTA. Uh, safety, equity, climate action, and economic prosperity. The Port Data Partnership also ties in with another program authorized under the California Budget Act of 2022 and the Governor's Supply Chain Package. Uh, the Port and Freight Infrastructure Program also known by many of you in the room as PFEP. Soon, uh, we expect to announce over $1.2 billion in PFIP project awards that will support uh, the vision for a cleaner, more efficient freight system that will power us into a more equitable and economically prosperous future. To successfully achieve the governor's vision and the legislature's historic uh, investments in port and freight, in ports and freight, we must build partnerships with all key st stakeholders in the freight sector, and especially with those communities impacted by freight movement. No single entity can do this work alone. We must come together in partnership to accomplish our goals. CalSTA is truly pleased to be a part of an exciting event like today. We pledge to support in your efforts uh, to collect data and analyze data, data that will enhance freight and supply chain efficiency at California's containerized ports. Again, thank you for inviting CalSTA, uh, the transportation agency, to be a part of such a uh, important uh, signing uh, that fits into many of the core four, very much into the core four priorities uh, that we have in transportation for the state. Excited to be here. Again, good morning. Good morning, good morning. thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Secretary. And with that, I would like to invite up to uh, the podium uh, Assemblymember Mike Gibson. Thank you very much. Good morning, buenos dias. Uh, my name is Mike Gibson. I have the distinct honor and pleasure of representing the 65th State Assembly Districts. Uh, those are areas of Watts Willowbrook, where I was born and raised, Compton, Carson, uh, North Long Beach, Harbor Gateway, North and South, Harbor City. Wilmington and San Pedro. I also chair the Select Committee on the Ports uh, and Goods Movement. I want to thank the governor's office um, as well as all representatives here representing uh, ports um, in the state of California. Um, without you, there will be no state. Without you, uh, our economy um, would be ruined. And, for, and certainly um, you are a powerhouse. You are the backbone of this country. And during this pandemic, uh, we saw what happened when we did not prioritize uh, this industry and the catastrophic effects uh, that it has had on the supply chain, not only in California, but across the United States of America. I am happy to say that we've learned from our lessons and we will work tirelessly, tirelessly uh, to provide essential funds and grant opportunities including the signing of this memorandum of understanding uh, that has produced uh, th these five ports working together. And it's about working together. It's about being and, and participating in a partnership. Um, it has secured $27 million grants. Um, and that's the day. Today we celebrate uh, this, uh, I would say, historic um, signing and this coming together. While these funds are uh, a good start um, for this industry, many 
area still needs to be improved in our ports. Um, this investment um, needs all collaboration with all stakeholders coming together. And I believe that this is a tremendous start. Uh, last year, we was able to, uh, myself in the Senate, uh, my partner who stands to my left, Senator Steve Bradford, was able to secure $110 million. $110 million for the uh, first national uh, port training center uh, that will rest in my district in the Los Angeles Harbor region to ensure adequate supply um, chain as well as trained workforce to be able to help the goods movement um, throughout not only, not only uh, Long Beach and Los Angeles, but all across the state of California. And we do this in partnership with organized labor. Um, and it's, again, it's facilitated in my district. And as a chair of the select committee on the ports, uh, my responsibility is to bring stakeholders together to continue the conversation, to continue the partnership that we desperately need to making sure that we are problem solvers in the areas of making sure that our ports are viable, that our ports are the number one in the country, that we continue to optimize all of our talent um, in our ports. And so I'm happy today with this historic uh, signing of this uh, memorandum uh, understanding, and I believe that the best is still yet to come. So thank you very much. Oh, can you clap? <laughs> Thank you, Assemblymember Gibson. And with that, I'd like to invite up Senator Stephen Bradford. Good morning. And it's truly an honor to be here representing the 35th Senate District that uh, has the honor of having both Long Beach and LA ports in my district, uh, a huge responsibility and a major challenge. And I appreciate all of you who have gathered here today for this historic signing of the MOU. And uh, understanding the importance that our ports play, the 12 here in the uh, state of California, as well as, like I say, Long Beach and uh, Los Angeles, uh, two of the largest ports in the country where over 40% of goods movement comes in those two ports and over 30% of the exports leave those two ports. So as Assemblyman Gibson stated, you guys are the economic engine that keeps not only California moving, but America moving. And I was able to see firsthand during the pandemic, the backlog and the impact that was uh, impacting goods movements all across the country firsthand with both the governor and the secretary as we visited the ports. But what we also saw was the men and women who worked there who rose to the occasion during this very difficult time and kept uh, this nation moving by making sure that those goods got to where they needed to be in a timely manner. Uh, and uh, so we commend you for the work that you've done. Again, uh, it's no doubt that the negotiations were long and arduous, but they were important that we iron these uh, differences out. And so we can always keep California moving forward because again, the best is yet to come. So on behalf of uh, the 35th Senate District, I thank you for being here and uh, thank you for the opportunity to just to say congratulations on this historic occasion. And uh, let's keep the goods moving here in California and across this nation. And next up is Assemblyman uh, Josh Lowenthal. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Secretary. And to all of our partners here today who made today happen. Some parts of our country, well, in some parts of our country, our West Coast ports are being counted out. Today is a testament as to why I believe our best days are even still ahead. I want to thank the ports and GoBiz for your coming to the table, getting this MOU executed. My team will tell you that I like data. The numbers will tell a story that words don't always quite grasp. That's what makes today so special, the data that will now capture. It wasn't long ago that you could look out onto the water from my district and see 100 ships idling, waiting to enter the ports of LA or Long Beach. You couldn't even drive down the street without seeing containers parked in our neighborhoods with nowhere to go. But today we're demonstrating to the world that California is united in its drive to be the best destination for containerized cargo and committing to ensuring what we do so efficiently, effectively, and timely. This first of its kind agreement is hopefully the first of many steps that we will take to ensure that the economic engine that powers the fifth largest economy in the world continues to thrive. 
I, for one, am excited about the days ahead and hope that you are too. Thank you once again. Thank you. And with that, we'd like to invite up Director Dee Dee Myers. Secretary. Uh, thank you, Trey. Uh, and thank you for bringing us all together today. I apologize for being late, but I was over at the Stanford mansion with Governor Newsom meeting with the ambassador from Chile. Uh, and he made a point uh, of saying how important it is for Chile to have a relationship, not just with the United States, but specifically with California because they're an important trading partner. They're an important foreign source of foreign direct investment of exports. Uh, and they culturally feel, as he said, we feel very well when we're in California. So it was just a good uh, sort of setup uh, for the moment here too, as we move forward in the important role that our ports play. Senator, you touched on it during the pandemic. Uh, we all saw the, the um, supply chain in crisis. And we both saw the complex challenges that we face, but we also saw opportunities, including this one. How do we make our goods move more efficiently? How do we get all of the system of systems of our goods movement uh, working together in a way um, that will uh, lift up workers, provide the goods that Californians and the rest of the country need, uh, and do that in a way that's sustainable? Uh, and one of the solutions that we came up with was building this port's uh, system so that we can all talk to each other so that all the movements in the supply chain, all the mods, modes in the supply chain can talk to each other uh, and can do that in a way that's efficient uh, and, and, that, and that supports the great service that the, that the ports uh, all over California provide. Um, it is a huge economic engine, Senator, you touched on that as well. It is the thing that drives so many jobs, such great quality of life, uh, so much of what makes the rest of the economy hum here in our state. And so everything we can do to support that, to, to secure it, to stand it up, uh, we're happy to do. So again, uh, this was part of the governor's budget last year. It was an historic investment in goods movement in the supply chain. We're really proud of that. Uh, and this is one piece of that. And so the work that this group has done, has done um, to begin that process, putting together an MOU to make sure that it goes smooth that we all know what the goals and objectives are and how that's going to roll out is a huge first step. So thank you all for being here. Thanks as always to our port directors and to their teams who uh, make it all work. Uh, you are a huge part of our economy. We're very grateful and we look forward to working with you all on next steps as we put this together. So thanks for uh, being here. Appreciate it. Great. And thank you all. And with that, we'd like to have the speakers up here um, exchange seats with those who are the port directors. They will all be now entering up on the stage and we will do a group group photo at the end. Um, so uh, just to move along for all of the port directors, um, the MOU is right here. There is uh, a pen to sign. Um, and then we'll go ahead and begin once we get everybody up here. So first, um, would like to invite up to the stage or into the podium, CEO and Port Director for the Port of Huaynimi, Kristen Degas. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you for all your remarks and all your leadership in putting this amazing project together for our ports. Um, it's truly an honor to be here today in the state's capital for such an important moment that brings together five California ports for the signing of an agreement that will support and enhance goods movements and the supply chain, which includes port and freight infrastructure. What started last fall with many meetings and presentations has progressed to all of us being here today for the signing of an MOU for the purpose of improving interoperability among ca the California's containerized ports. This historic investment by Governor Newsom in container ports promises to allow our five ports here represented to best move exports from our great state. Importantly, this strategic technological alignment and partnership will specifically enable the Port of Wanimi to best support the ecosystem of California ports as one of the top US ports in a resiliency hub. It takes the state to the next level by connecting the supply chain with a cloud-based cargo data system that promises to minim minimize disruption and prosper fluidity in goods movement, both statewide and nationwide. The technological transition also ramps up the overall competitiveness of our container ports here in California. The signing of today's agreement is a show of a unified support of operational improvement, efficiency, and emissions reduction. I would like to thank our state legislators, our governor, 
Director Myers, Secretary Omashakin, and Kappa for your leadership in bringing this funding opportunity. A special thanks to Trey Bradley, GoBiz Director of Sustainable Freight and Supply Chain for leading this partnership effort and to get all five of us ports on the same page in terms of using data systems to securely share information and expedite data exchange across port users. I would also like to share my appreciation for our team uh, my team, specifically my team, raise your hand. Thank you for your due diligence and hard work to help get this over the finish line. <laughs> and thank you for having the Port of Wanimi be part of this unprecedented funded opportunity to further strengthen our ports and ensure the security of goods movement for the state of California for many years to come. Thank you. All right, next up, we have Executive Director for the Port of Long Beach, Mario Cordero. Thank you, Trey, and good morning to everybody. Uh, it's certainly comforting from myself as executive director and my colleagues, uh, the political will that's behind these ports today. So I very much appreciate uh, Governor Newsom, uh, Secretary Mershakin, and of course our assembly member, uh, Steve Bradford and Mike Gibson, the Senator, and newly elected assembly member, Josh Lowenthal, and of course, Go Biz, Didi, your leadership with regard to the port agenda is extremely, uh, we're extremely thankful with regard to where the ports are today. Uh, so as uh, I mentioned, uh, the shape of things to come for the ports here of the state of California. I've often say that we are the fourth largest economy in the world. And certainly I think we all agree that a primary factor is of course the California ports. Uh, so with that, international trade plays a great component with regard to not only the national GDP, but of course, the state GDP. So again, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's a great day for the ports, particularly on the subject matter that's long been discussed with regard to information sharing. And so this investment in good movement data technology will serve the state and the people of California for many decades to come. It will put California and continue to be California uh, in a leadership position, not only with regard to international trade, but with regard to data sharing, and of course, assure our competitiveness as a state and as ports in the nation. And it's a very prime time to make sure that we give comfort to the beneficial cargo owners and all the stakeholders in international trade with regard to the importance of these ports in California. So this is a much needed, uh, uh, action. It will spur innovation. And of course, from our perspective, the lynchment of success of our digital infrastructure projects is that they will be able to readily communicate with each other and throughout the supply chain. To do that, we need to refine the means for safely and securely share the relevant data between the nodes of the supply chain. Some years ago, we were debating about even sharing data. Proprietary interest was a great conversation and obstacle to moving to where we're at today. That's no longer an obstacle. So I think again, as we move forward, it's gonna be great times ahead for the California ports in the state of California. As been mentioned in the cargo, as been mentioned with regard to the supply chain, the cargo uh, surge and the supply chain challenges that arose during the pandemic demonstrated the need for us to increase efficiencies and in digital interoperability more than ever before. So with that, Again, I want to make sure that uh, I thank not only everybody in this room for their leadership, my colleagues at the ports in terms of continuing to move what we need to do to make sure the California ports are competitive. And from the Port of Long Beach perspective, developing what we call the supply chain information highway. And as a state and as stakeholders moving forward with our respective digital infrastructure that can bring not only supply chain benefits, but environmental benefits as well. So with that, again, I'd like to thank the Newsom administration, the governor, secretary for your leadership, Madam Director, and of course the legislature for the ports of California, which will not only benefit our port, but more importantly, benefit the competitive edge for the state of California, and of course our national economy. So thank you so much. Thank you. And next up, we have Deputy Executive Director for the Port of Los Angeles, David Libetik. Good morning. Uh, 
Gene Sirocco wishes he could be here for this uh, this event. Uh, I'm da David Libatis, Los Angeles, and uh, the Port of Los Angeles is is excited to be a part of this signing today. Uh, we're excited because uh, it is once again a firm evidence that the type and the kind of partnership and leadership exists in California to permanently and creatively address the supply chain challenges we've, we've seen and experienced and lived through over the past couple of years. This MOU establishes a framework for California's containerized ports to coordinate and apply an object lesson from the pandemic. Data makes our supply chain and makes our freight system work better. We all remember the ships backed, off, backed up off our coast. Data allowed us to diagnose and address that problem. The problem was that the overall freight system capacity was not up to snuff to deal with the surge of import cargo. But data allows us to make more efficient use of infrastructure and equipment so that we could expand system capacity. And because we know congestion actually creates emissions, that efficiency actually lowers emissions and reduces the impact on surrounding communities. Data enables this. Data-driven efficiency makes us more competitive, for sure. And the data empowers the private sector and the cargo owners to control costs, avoid delays, and focus fully on competing in global markets. This makes us more attractive to these cargo owners to bring their cargo to California. That is a model to the rest of the world. With today's signing, California, by our count, is the first state to step up with policy, program, and funding around supply chain digitalization. The Port of Light could not be prouder to be part of this effort. I want to thank all of our state leaders, my Senator Steve Radford, my Assembly Member Mike Gibson, the Governor, uh, Director Myers, Secretary Mushakin, and of course, Trey, who is a hard negotiator. <laughs> thank you all for making this happen. And just a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. And then we have from the uh, Maritime Director for the Port of Oakland, Brian Brandis. Good morning, everybody. Uh, <clears throat> it's a pleasure today to uh, represent the Port of Oakland. Uh, I'm Brian Brandis, uh, the Director of Maritime. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Didi Myers and uh, Chuck Somashakan and some of the senators, poor colleagues uh, for being here today. So innovation drives uh, our industry. Uh, the ports of California serve, you know, the most in innovative regions, uh, you know, in the, in the state, perhaps, uh, you know, perhaps the, the country, perhaps the world, right? Uh, California is the center of the digital economy and our industry, you know, must be a leader uh, in, this, uh, in this area to improve our shipping operations. By collaborating with our legislative and maritime leaders, we will use technology to improve our, uh, our freight movement. The Port of Oakland has been a long uh, time, uh, you know, has embraced uh, technology for a long time. We were the first major seaport uh, to adopt containerization in the 1960s. We are now looking towards a zero emission seaport. Innovation continues to drive uh, our operations and what we do in Oakland. A common digital platform will improve visibility and optimize day-to-day -day operations, providing the data to be, you know, to clear up bottlenecks. The pl this platform will speed up delivery times, uh, which is crucial for our California agricultural um, uh, commodities, as well as reduce consumer costs for our imports. The investment by California in our digital infrastructure will allow goods to get to markets quicker, grow our economy, and create jobs. Today's data partnership MOU is a clear commitment to an innovative uh, approach that will improve freight movement uh, and well, um, you know, freight movement in the state well into the future. And it's a bold step uh, and worthy of the state that we all serve. So again, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to, uh, to serve uh, Port of Oakland today. Thank you very much, Brian. And to conclude uh, our five containerized ports, we have Vice President of Maritime for the Port of San Diego, Michael Clark. All right, Port of San Diego, last but certainly not least. Uh, <clears throat> good morning, everyone. I'm Mike LaFleur, Vice President of Maritime with the Port of San Diego. It's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, it's a great day for our state's ports. It really is. 
Uh, we're grateful to the governor for making these funds available to improve collaboration between the ports and improve data management and cargo flow efficiency. There's a saying on the waterfront, if you've seen one port, you've seen one port, right? We're all unique in our own special ways. We specialize in dry bulk, break bulk, refrigerated containers and cars. In fact, one in every 10 cars you see out on the road came through the Port of San Diego in our National City Marine Terminal. Although unique, uh, we have a shared vision of efficiently moving cargo, reducing container and cargo dwell time, supporting cloud-based solutions, data enhancements, data security, and visibility of supply chain digitalization. A shared vision we are closer to making reality. Additionally, at the Port of San Diego, we have been working diligently in making our maritime business a greener, cleaner, and modern operation. This partnership, this MOU, and the path forward, the funding needed will additionally align with our zero emission goals as outlined in the object objectives of our maritime clean air strategy by supporting the state's broader vision of efficiency, collaboration, data visibility, and modernized clean operations. We look forward to using this opportunity to make even more progress. We look forward to working with all those in this room, our ports, their leadership, staff in the coming months and years to make this a success. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I think the comment was made about tough negotiator. I think one question I get is like, why is the order in such a way? And it's because it's alphabetical. Uh, so it is very neutral in that sense. Um, we would like to bring everyone up, uh, all speakers who have spoken thus far for group photo. Um, and then following that, uh, we will then have the opportunity for folks to do individual photos and well as well. Um, but um, thank you very much, everybody. Um, so let's go ahead and do 